While everybody in the United States is getting ready to put their bees to bed, mine are just on the way. And what's it gonna take to get started? Well, this is one of the jobs that you have to do in order to get started. I've got big news. Uh, the bees are on the way. If you're holding up your frame and you tip it this way to see the other side, that comb will just fall right out, break, and they've wasted all all that hard work. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and all the shit you don't do. Well, I'm a make hell of Good morning, beekeepers. Good morning, bee curious people. Good morning, sightseers. Welcome to Bye Bye City, Leyte. I almost said Indiana. I'm so used to saying Indiana my whole life. I'm amazed. Still, every morning I wake up, I'm shocked that I'm here in Bye Bye City, Leyte. This place is absolutely beautiful, and I've got some really good news. Sorry for interrupting this video, but I just wanted to interject. Uh, today is Saturday morning. It's not quite 7 a.m. And you see over behind me, the mountains, it's pretty cloudy out there. Uh, we have just been through a severe tropical storm, Paing, and um, it has rained here for the past couple of days already, uh, almost nonstop. And, um, they're predicting more rain today with another tropical storm right behind this one. Um, this tropical storm was really big. Uh, in our area, we didn't have any uh, damaging wind. Uh, we did have some wind, but it was not what I would call damaging wind uh, or uh, uh, it's certainly, it wasn't typhoon force. It didn't ever develop into a typhoon. Uh, it, was just labeled a severe tropical storm but the size uh, covered the entire country from southern parts of Mindanao all the way up to uh, northern parts of uh, Luzon and it's moving on uh, right now it's still over most of the country but uh, there is a break in the rain right now and the breeze that's coming through is uh, pretty comfortable and it's helping to uh, uh, dry the terrace here. Um, in regard to the house and our situation, everybody here is fine. Everybody is safe. Um, we developed a couple. We found a couple of leaks in the house, but uh, minor, you know, first world problems. And uh, there are certainly people uh, in our area who are not doing quite as well as we are. Um, we have heard stories of uh, localized flooding in the uh, areas near the rivers. Um, we heard a story of one, at least one landslide um, that possibly uh, covered the highway and maybe blocked off certain areas uh, from town. Uh, but that's fairly common occurrence but uh, we're praying for those people in those affected areas and uh, hope that nobody was hurt. Um, and we just hope that it was just dirt on the road and nothing more severe than that. I just wanna say uh, thank you for all the, your uh, uh, well wishes and prayers and concern. Uh, but everything here is so far so good and uh, we are doing well and as far as the bees are concerned, uh, I talked to my supplier yesterday. The bees were supposed to be here tomorrow, and they're coming from Luzon. There's, with the storm coming in, I talked to my supplier, and uh, I asked if it would be better to uh, postpone the delivery. He said yes, um, that he was actually going to reach out to me and ask if it would be okay to... Uh, postpone that delivery uh, and of course I said yes postpone it I don't want anybody's uh, life at risk 
to deliver bees. So he's estimating probably next week for delivery, uh, but we'll be touching base on that closer to the fact. But uh, so my boxes are ready to go. The frames are ready to go. Uh, I do need to get out to the farm. Oh, that was what I was going to say with the landslide. Right now, I could, I, if I had to go out there today, I wouldn't be able to get there. Uh, from what I understand, uh, somewhere between here and the farm on the highway, there's been a landslide. So I won't be going out there to set up hive stands uh, today or tomorrow. I'll give them a few days to work on that. And when I hear that the road is open and everything's normal, then I'll be headed back out there to get that work done. Uh, but that's the last step, setting up the hive stands, getting them, uh, putting in my anchors um, so I can get everything strapped down. And uh, hopefully next week, bees will be here. But uh, so anyway, back to, this, back to this video about setting up these frames. All right, I hope you enjoy. God bless everyone. But first I wanna show you just what a beautiful day today is. Even if it's raining, even if it's gloomy and cloudy this place is gorgeous look at those mountains the clouds over the tall ones there isn't this just absolutely amazing i absolutely love this i love it here could not be happier look have to be grateful have to be thankful for everything and uh truly blessed and i'm blessed that you're here if you are new to the channel, thank you for being here. I am so happy that you're here. I've got big news. Uh, the bees are on the way. Uh, my mission here is uh, move from Indiana to Bye Bye City, Leyte, Philippines. And I have a farm outside of town. I actually have two farms outside of town. One is very small, only a little bit, uh, right around a half an acre. My other farm is two hectares. It is outside of town, about 20 minutes away, 25 minutes away. And it is packed with uh, coconut trees. I've got 85 coconut trees. It's on a river. It's beautiful. Check out my other videos and uh, you'll be able to see that up close and in person. We've been doing a lot of work there trying to get it ready because that's where the bees are going to go. While everybody in the United States is getting ready to put their bees to bed, mine are just on the way. Which means this is technically, this is for me, this is my early spring. And I have still got a lot of work to do to get ready. Now today, I'm preparing the rest of my frames. But normally you take a full sheet of uh, foundation and you drop it in a frame and let the bees get to work. I'm gonna be asking a little bit more of my bees. I'm removing the wire from my pre-wired foundation and I'm cutting it into starter strips. I'm gonna let the bees make more of their own natural wax. And to do that, uh, or to aid in that, I am cross-wiring with uh, fishing line my, my frames, uh, just to give them a little bit more support. These are the supplies that I'm gonna need. Obviously, I need my foundation. Got one full sheet of foundation here. You see it's imprinted, it's embossed with the uh, cells. It does have the uh, wire embedded in there. That's to help stabilize it during uh, extraction. Don't need my phone in the picture. I bought a really weird Japanese staple gun because I forgot to send one. I need a T50 uh, staple gun. When I went to the mall this was the only one I could find. Over here, I have carpet tacks. Okay. Here are my carpet tacks. These are just over a half an inch long, and they do have a head on them. And uh, I'll show you those I use to help wire the foundation in. And my wire today is. Uh, eight pound test uh, fishing line. I've got my hammer, a pair of needle nose pliers, and I have a straight edge. I'm using my level 
but that's my straight edge. And of course, I've got a razor knife, okay? Because I need a nice clean edge. If you're a beekeeper, you'll know that um, fresh, fresh honeycomb is very, very soft, especially in the summertime or here in the tropics when things are uh, very hot. If you're holding up your frame and you tip it this way to see the other side, that comb will just fall right out, break, and they've wasted all, all that hard work. So the correct way to do it is to lift your frame up out of the hive, inspect one side, and rotate it like a steering wheel clockwise or counterclockwise, and then turn it around to see the other side so that the the wax as it's being built will go like this and then you can re-rotate it and put it back into the hive what I want to do is you can see on here I've got three holes drilled just in case I decided to use three strands of wire I'm going to do cross stranding and just use the outer two holes like I said, I made these myself. I could have put six holes in there if I wanted to, but I chose to do three. It's the benefit of doing things yourself. Is you get to customize them any way you want. I take my needle nose pliers and one carpet tack, and I come along here, just above my, or just below my bottom hole on the side. I give that a whack and then I repeat the process and with my needle nose because those tiny little nails are too hard for my big fingers to hold on to I put another one at the top so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fishing line and I'm gonna spin off a about a yard or yard and a half and uh, we'll go underneath this top nail here at that top hole okay so I string that through there so I come back through hole on the other side and pull that through go up to the top hole and in and then out through the bottom next to my other bottom nail and I'm gonna pull maybe seven or eight inches through there. Now I'm not tensioning any of this yet, but now I'm just gonna go around and around and around and around, seven, eight, nine, ten times, whatever you feel like. The lighter your fishing line, the more times you need to go around so that it'll build up on there. Okay. Now, going back, now I have to whack that in and trim it off. Okay, so I've got this one trimmed off and you see it did split the wood just a little bit, but uh, if you've got a uh, lighter weight nail, then that would work just as well but I have pretty good luck with these and now I'm using my thumb I've wrapped the fishing line around my fingers and I give it a good pull because I I want that I want that to be able to play a tune and now I go around and around the top one okay And 
touch that with the razor and there we go that is step one wiring a frame so yesterday I did about 25 of those that's what I'm gonna need to get started um, I've got five five frame nuke boxes coming they're gonna come with their own frames obviously those frames are going to get lifted out of their nuke boxes and put into my five frame boxes as a permanent home. Uh, then these frames are going to go in five medium boxes directly on top of the five frames that uh, are being delivered so that the bees will have a chance to uh, expand, move up, and uh, get busy. Now, I don't want five frames of all starter strip directly above the bees. Um, it gives them a lot of opportunities to make a mess, to make funky comb, weird comb, wonky comb, whatever you want to call it, wild comb, cross comb. Uh, so many people call it something else. But anyway, it's comb that doesn't fit and hang perfectly straight inside your box the way that you wanted it on the frames. Um, so I want to encourage them to make nice, straight, even comb on every single frame all the way across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install, because I'm using five frame boxes, I'm going to install two frames in each box with full sheets of foundation, um, which hurts a little bit because my foundation is um, precious to me. And uh, I've maybe got 100 sheets total. Uh, like I said, it did come from Man Lake. I did ship it over here. I left it in the boxes. And surprisingly, thankfully, it all got here in uh, good condition because it's packed uh, correctly. Uh, Man Lake puts a piece of tissue paper in between each layer, each sheet of uh, uh, foundation. So my foundations are not sticking together. They're not breaking. They're, uh, because it's warm, they stayed soft and supple. They didn't uh, break. They didn't crack. They didn't dry out. Now, now that I have my frame wired, I need to cut uh, starter strips. And this is the way I've been doing it. Okay, back again with the sheet of foundation. Now, what I learned yesterday was that it because Man Lake does a really good job of embedding the wire into the foundation and because I didn't buy any wireless foundation if I learned that if I just start yanking on these and pulling them out the sheet has a tendency to rip tear and break right along that seam uh, and it still might but I learned that if I use my needle nose pliers and try to slide it out, I'm having fewer issues. Uh, there we go. Let's see, I'm just easing it out. Once you get it started, it comes out pretty easily. And that tore a little bit at the top, but uh, for the most part, that sheet is still intact. Okay. And I am working very delicately and carefully. So I just have to repeat that each time. It did tear a little bit in the corner, but not the problem. All right, now I would recommend if you've got a large, an extra large cutting board, use it. I have been doing this diagonally. I want my starter strip, you can see on here, I want the starter strip to be about a half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch 
uh, or a little less. It's okay, you know. Um, you can see there. There's my tack strip that's been stapled into place with the starter strip underneath, and you can maybe see the wires under there. But I'm not grabbing a ruler or anything so I just grab my my tack strip because I know I want it longer than my tack strip so I've just been rolling my tack strip over and using that as uh, as, my, as my measurement I'll take this tack strip out grab my my razor knife and extend it pretty far cut that along okay now this little this little corner it did come off that's okay and there we go there's there's my starter strip and then I just take that starter strip and I make sure that I keep it oriented in the right way you see now this is starting to crack apart a little bit and I just Press it up against the top bar. And put all my little pieces back in. Put my tack strip in, which holds everything down. Make sure it's all in. Right. Like so. And now it's just a matter of uh, running my new Japanese stapler. Like so. And now my starter strip is in. And I just run my thumb along here and press it into the tack strip a little bit and now it's nice and straight and no you can't see it but it's up and down and it's aiming right at these uh, fishing lines so when the bees start to build that hanging down they'll start at the they'll start at the starter strip they'll work their way down this fishing line will be inside the wax the comb that they build and it will give them some extra strength when I'm doing this when I'm putting in my starter strips I can get six pieces out of every piece of foundation uh, just by you know measuring it with my tack strip rolling it down and cutting it rolling it down and cutting it um, I can get six pieces the very last piece is a little bit narrow uh, but it's still plenty wide enough to uh, make a full sheet. So uh, What would normally be one to two dollars worth of foundation per frame I'm now uh, Spending a sixth of that so I'm getting six frames per sheet and uh, That's gonna make my foundation go a lot lot further Like I said, I need ten pieces a full sheet foundation to help train the bees to draw their comb straight. This stuff is fragile. Now when I'm doing uh, full sheets of foundation there's no need for me to add extra reinforcement so I'm not wiring these frames. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm starting from the side that has my, my notch, my cutout, where the tack strip went. And I'm just laying this, oops, I'm just laying the foundation into the bottom groove. And it fits in there nicely. And then the top just lays in there like that. And I can turn it upside down. It stays in place. 
And rather than putting in the tack strip like this, which I guess I can on this one, there's two, there are two ways to do it. You can staple these wires right across, or you can put in the tack strip. I'll put one, I'll do one with the tack strip first. And this time, instead of running my tack strip this way and stapling this direction, I'm going to lay my tack strip down the way that it was oriented in the board to begin with. That way it catches all of those wires all at the same time. And then I can just staple that in. And now that piece of foundation is secure. It's going nowhere. So now I have nine more to go. And uh, then this job will be done. And I will be back to waiting for the bees and uh, heading out to the farm as soon as the rain stops to try and set up those hive stands. I really don't want to be doing them last minute. But uh, it's getting pretty close to the last minute. Only a couple more days to go. And uh, I'm sorry if I keep looking distracted. But how do you not occasionally look up and stare at this? This view is breathtaking. Is this place cool or what? Just absolutely love it thank you for watching uh, I know this was a simple video and any of you guys who are experienced beekeepers will say my gosh it's so boring I've been doing that for years well okay this is just a new one just a short one to help the people that uh, have never seen it before because I do know uh, from the comments that some of you are brand new uh, never kept bees no experience with bees don't know anything about them you're looking forward to learning um, and uh, maybe you'll have bees in the future maybe you're just getting started and uh, you've been thinking about getting bees you're going into winter in the United States and the northern hemisphere and you're just wondering what it what it's all about and what's it gonna take to get started well this is one of the jobs that you have to do in order to get started and it's critical it's not glamorous but it's critical you have to do it and uh, you can buy plastic foundation I guess if you want to but uh, I've always preferred the natural so that's this is the way that I do it not the way I'm not telling anybody how to do it or how you should do it but I really appreciate you being here I'm so grateful to have you watching be kind be well be safe God bless. I love y'all.